right, welcome back to another episode of the Carter Cast. I'm your host, Carter Vaughn. On today's show, it's Grant, it's Dylan and I, and we do our preview of this upcoming weekend of college football, NFL. We go through all the big games, our favorite picks, through all the college football lines and NFL lines that we like. Uh, it's a fantastic show. We give our podcast parlay for college football and the NFL and make sure to check out cartercast.com for picks coming out this weekend as well that I really like. And of course, the weekly BYU picks and preview blog. Make sure to check that out. And then also, if you're listening on audio, make sure to hit that subscribe button, rate, review, leave a nice review. We really appreciate it. And I hope you guys enjoy the show. All right, we're back. Uh, off of a Thursday night football game, Dylan, ride or die. We got the over. We got the over, baby. Over 38, over 38 and a half, whatever your number was, that was gross. We, we, these Thursday night games, you just have to power through them. You just grind them out and you come out on top every time. Not, not an overs guy. Going to go on record for that. But that was pretty fun, wasn't it, Carter? That was there pretty you go. fun. Welcome, welcome to the club. Welcome to the club, dude. <laughs> See, cheering for you. points is always better than cheering for, you know, defensive stops. Let's be honest Bro, here. I, I said it before we started. <laughs> It felt like I was cheering for an under. Like, <laughs> it it was awful. It was awful. Seeing <laughs> seeing Mitch Trubisky just roll out every single time and just throw a uh, throw five yards short of the receiver is so frustrating. <laughs> I will I will say you were talking about uh, root for points is fun. When when I was in Vegas for the Seahawks Broncos game, we all the boys had under 44. Nothing was more exhilarating than those two red zones turnovers. The place <laughs> went crazy. Oh, my God. It was – and then that's the my best man Vegas. had the over. My brother, the best man, had the over, so we were all celebrating. He was sitting there in the corner like – like this. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying. When, the, when the, the fumbling starts to happen back to back and you're like, okay, like this is like – just getting funky now. Like this is <laughs> – Someone is cheering and someone's just so pissed. Like this game is so rigged. That person's like, "Yeah, this just makes total sense." Two fumbles on the goal line. That's totally normal. Yeah, of course. It's so <laughs> oh my normal, goodness. Man. Yeah, that no, it funny. felt like I was watching an Iowa game all night long. Just <laughs> Iowa football <laughs> from the start, bro. Uh, uh, Spencer Petrus was playing quarterback for both teams. All right, <laughs> let's talk. Let's talk about college football. Let's start off with college football. Let's start it off with the every single game day show in America is going there is going to Knoxville, Tennessee this weekend. I, I legitimately think – I don't know a single game day show that's not going there. A college game day, Barstool, uh, Josh Pate show, everybody's going there. Uh, <laughs> let me get the line real quick. I believe it's Tennessee minus 10.5 against Florida over under 62.5. Uh, in Florida, you see the stat. They haven't thrown a passing touchdown. Yeah, it's it's wow. – it's- since the first week, man, like everyone was totally claiming Heisman watch, right? Since the first week. And now we're looking at, yeah, this is definitely not a Heisman watch at this point, but it's also like, what has happened with this offense? It's the, it's the weirdest like development. So again, it goes back to the thing we said of like, what happened in that Utah game? Like what was Utah? We don't really know that yet either. But also at the same time, it's like, who is this Florida team, man? Like that start was so hot. And then they almost, they should have lost to USF last week. Like, frankly, they should have lost to USF at home. So, if you're talking about going to Tennessee now, you're in Knoxville, oof, that's a rough That's a rough time. But, again, that 10 and a half is – that's a lot of points. It's a lot of points. It's a lot um, of points. So, no offensive touchdowns or not, that's still a lot of points. That's the only, <laughs> that's the only worry. Like, uh, and – I, but I think a lot of points will be scored. A little spoiler yeah. for my pick later. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, man, I, I mean, do you see Florida pulling off the upset at all? That Tennessee defense is pretty bad. I, That's I what will I'm say that that That's that defense saying. is pretty bad. But we do have we do have a Heisman watch on this game, Grant. It's just on the it's on the other side of the game. We got Hendon yes. Hooker, and you know I'm really hoping he pulls it out for this little Heisman run. This game's tough for me. I don't have a play on it, but I mean that Tennessee defense is pretty bad. If Florida's going to be able to score, it's going to be on a team like this. But Tennessee is going to be able to score at the exact same clip. Yeah. Let me yeah, does see he over hit without an offensive touchdown from Florida? That's like <laughs> bro, no, <laughs> no, the pattern. I, I, no, they'll get their passing touchdown. No worries. I think okay. Anthony Richardson's gonna throw for like he, this is the game he comes back on where there's national spotlight. 
everyone's watching, and he's just going to ball out for no reason. And everyone's going to be like, Anthony Richardson's back. And then the next game, they're going to play like Vanderbilt, and he's going to throw like three picks and almost lose. That would try plays to his competition. Exactly. Can you blame him? Let me see here. What's uh, what's Florida's next game? Does anybody know off the top of their head? I don't know. It is perfect. Eastern Washington. I was so even close. better. Even better. <laughs> That's somehow better than Vanderbilt. Uh, yeah. All right. You're probably Ghost right. of Cooper That's Cup. Probably... So, yeah, Grant, do you have a pick in this game or no? Uh, no. No, this wow. is a complete stay away from me. The points are too much. It's too many points. And you're banking – if you're taking the over, you're banking on Florida to, like, actually rediscover what they are in Knoxville. Uh, I don't really like that bet either. So, <laughs> it, it's you know what I'm saying? You're, you're betting a lot on what Anthony Richardson was week one. And I don't know if that's a good bet to, to figure out in college game days. So, yeah, this is a stay away game for me. Too many points. I this can't one, take it one way or the other. I could get a little action in on this game if it got down to nine and a half. Even up to like game time, if it moved down, I think I would put something on Tennessee nine and a half. But ten in the hook, that's just that's outside the football number. Agreed. Over. I'll just small play on the over. <laughs> I love two and a half. I respect it. I mean, if you're gonna play this, I feel like you cannot take the under in this game. Well, no, I just think that these. I don't think. I mean, I just don't think these defenses are that good. I I don't think Anthony Richardson is that bad. I just don't. And I think yep. Hendon Hooker is that good. I, li- I like the over. Sue me. Uh, Clemson and, at Wake Forest. What were you going to say? I was just, it's a pace game, too. Both these teams like to move fast. So if anything's going in your favor, it's definitely going to be that. I mean, Tennessee I just lot, keeps moving and moving. I see a lot of pass interference penalties happening in this game. I'll tell you that. <laughs> that <checks laughs> tell out. tell that me you don't see. Out. And there's going to the be over one like, that. That might be the play. But there might, there's going to be like one really controversial one that like really s with the game. Uh, all right, Clemson at Wake Forest in Winston Salem. Clemson is minus seven and a half on the road. Over under is fifty five and a half. Uh, I like Clemson in this one. Unfortunately, I I, I have a soft spot for Wake football, but Cle- Clemson's going to be able to get pressure on Sam Hartman. We saw Wake Forest barely beat Liberty, and when Liberty pressured them. Wake threw for Sam Hartman threw for five for 13 and had two turnovers when they got pressure to him. That Wake offensive line isn't great. That Clemson D line is all NFL ready. I think I think Clemson might whoop them in this one. And for that reason, I almost lean Wake. Um, for every reason you just said, you're right though. Like Clemson's defensive line is next level, right on par with what Georgia had basically last year. It's just it's really impressive their defense, but man, you're betting on DJ to cover games. Period. It's like ugh, I don't like that. He has not proven to be that guy I don't, at all. I'm not quite sure about the spread. <clears throat> Seven and a half is like I mean, geez, that, like that touchdown. Like six and a half, you kind of feel a little more comfortable. But also, this Wake defense stinks. It does. I mean, no, you're they're right. giving like, up 25 plus to every single team. Like in every metric. Clemson should take care of this game. They should be able to cover a seven point spread against Wake for sure. Just the biggest thing that scares me has nothing to do with the statistics. It has everything to do with the public money. They're all over Clemson. And I hate being in that situation. That's right. Like every time I'm on, on with the public side, with this super happy like that, it never it never goes well. So that's the biggest concern for me. I don't think I'm gonna play anything on this one, but if I did have to play because of the public money, I'd literally lean Wake. As crazy as that is. I kind of like the under here. I, I know that. In all of Wake Forest and Clemson's games, some team that's involved in those games has scored over 40 points. But I think, well, number number one, both teams haven't played great teams yet. And number two, when you have numbers like that, you're due for a little bit of regression. So I don't have a side, but I think, you know, you know me, Mr. Unders, we're going under 55 and a half for this one. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Let's give you the little money stats real quick. So. 75% 75% of bets are on Clemson and 63% of the money is on Clemson. Okay, that's not too bad then. And then that means, that means there's definitely some big money coming in on Wake. The total is uh 90% of the money is on over 55 and a half or 90% of bets are on 55 and a half. 85% of the money is on over mm. 55 and a half. The over. That's all I like right. to hear. Put me I'll with the books, baby. Yeah then. Yeah, that, that screams under, baby. <laughs> that does scream under. That, all right. Um, moving on. Let's do uh let's do a little USC Oregon State in Corvallis. 
USC minus five and a half. The over under, I believe, is 70 and a half. 70 and a half. These <laughs> USC totals are insane. Yep, 70 and a half. And uh, before we get into this one, the most historic amount of money is on Oregon State already. Multiple there, I think it's, I think we talked before the podcast, I believe it's over 10 six figure plus bets already on Oregon State. The line opened, I think it's seven and a half, eight and a half. It's already down to five and a half. Uh, I don't even know. I mean, I, I guess Oregon State. <laughs> like I don't know. Like these <laughs> lines are weird this week. Oregon State's like a dog team this year, man. Like they got that dog in them for sure. They're like one of those weird teams that for sure is like sneaky good. I guess right. I guess we saw that last one they beat Utah. But I honestly, bro, like this is one of those where I actually would. I fade those big, big checks, bro. I would still put money behind the better team, better quarterback, trust in Caleb Williams, trust in the fact that they're going to be able to get this, the job done. Although this would be one of the bigger tests they're going to have in the season, like on the roads. Right. So, and I don't think they played on the road up to this point, or at least against anyone yet. So, um, but Caleb Williams obviously isn't a freshman. He played last year at Oklahoma. So he has that they experience. Played, they played at Stanford. Okay, well, then, yeah, they for sure didn't play an away game. That's, they call that the library, bro, for a reason. Nobody shows up to those games. So they basically haven't played on the road yet. This will be their first road test um, outside of the library. So um, I do – I actually like USC in this one. I, I'm laying the points with USC. I actually am going to play this one. So I have no official play on this game. I'm not, I'm not too familiar with these two teams yet. But my first thought – because I, I saw all the same tweets you did about Oregon State getting all this money. And I have it right here. It opened as a seven point game and now it's five and a half. In my mind, I'm thinking that if this much money is coming in on Oregon State, it's not just it's not just moving a point and a half. I mean, I've seen games at Circa move a touchdown and they're not getting nearly as much money as this. So that that kind of tells me that the books might be okay with being a little bit uh, uh a little bit more vulnerable to the Oregon State side. So if I had to pick, I'd probably lean USC, but I think I want to stay away. That's what I was going to say because I'm looking at it right now. So 76% of the bets are on USC. 58% of the money is still on USC. Even with all this yeah. massive Oregon money coming in. That's weird. Uh, that's just weird. And then, it's a weird game. Uh, Definitely yeah, weird game. It, it's a weird game and I, weird games. Pac-12 after dark. Shocker. I like the over. The, the, the crazy thing is too, like when you're talking about like Pac-12 teams too, and like playing at home, they're way better at home. So like Oregon State and Corvallis is completely different than Oregon State on the road. So like in that Utah is the perfect sense, example. Yeah, true, exactly. Like these Pac-12 teams at home are way different beasts than they are on the road. So like I do understand the the sentiment of like taking the home the home team like that, right, and getting all those points. But like at the same time, and like USC is so talented, unless they play it to their level of competition. They should be able to take. They should be able to cover spread like this. Like that's where I come from. It's like there's so much talent there. They have so much talent on that team on that roster. They should be able to cover. But maybe again, it's in Corvallis. Things get weird, like you said, just like they did against Oregon. Like, and they just cover weird, like a weird spread. They make it close game, even if they lose close. So I could see it. But I, like I said, I think an official play for me is legit. Like USC taking the points, you know, laying the points with them. I've, I've got a question for Grant real quick because Carter, you and I talked about this the during the last episode. And I want I want to know what Grant thinks. If you had to choose between one of these two teams that you think is going to make the college football playoff, USC or Oklahoma, who are you taking? USC. Yep, we're all in agreement there. Okay. E right. Easier path because the Pac-12 is easier than the Big 12 in my opinion. And on top of that, I like the quarterback, Caleb Williams, more than I do, uh, uh, what's his name, uh, Dylan Gabriel. Yeah, even coaching Leak and Riley, like I, yeah, okay, we're we're on the same yeah. page there. The biggest yeah. thing in this game, though, is that USC can't stop the run. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's Oregon true. can run the ball like there's no tomorrow. Oregon State, yeah, 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 yeah. Oregon State, obviously. Yeah, yeah. I'm no, I'm with you. Like I said, there, there's definitely like it makes sense why the money is flying in Oregon State. I, I don't, I don't hate that play. I don't hate taking the points there. It's just like, like you said, if if USC is legitimately title contender this year and they are playing in a league where they can definitely do damage to get to the college football playoff, like this is one of those road tests that they're going to have to take care of. And I think they're going to be able to take care of it. Last thing on this game, I mentioned it on the last show. USC is the most fun team to watch in college football, and I don't even think it's remotely close. 
I mean, it is electric watching, especially. And I was against UC, USC last week. I had Fresno State. They're still so fun to watch, dude. It is legit just Pat Mahomes and the Chiefs just l- yep. letting it fly, dude. It's a shame they have such bad colors for being such a fun team to watch. I mean, <laughs> I cannot stand those colors. Really? I kind of love the, the, the helmet. I don't hate them. Iconic, man. I kind of love it. The Trojan man. helmet. I think it's just because it's red, dude. You just like hate red. Yeah. Well, that's di- that's different. That's different. This is like a maroon. Now that that blood red that they have, well, I say down south when I'm actually living here. But oh, I can't I can't stand that even more. Pair it with silver. <laughs> real quick, we'll go over one last game and then we'll just run into picks. Uh, real quick, Arkansas at Texas A and M. Texas A and M is minus two over under is forty nine. The line opened at Arkansas plus six and a half. And it's yeah, it's gotten bet all the way down. Yeah, I think Arkansas is a better team, better co- honestly. As crazy, this is better, better coach than Jimbo Fisher. This is like, a complete stay away. J- yeah, I, I'm with you. I don't <laughs> think it's an official play for me, but if I had to lean, I would definitely take Arkansas. With the, give me Arkansas with the points against AM, although they are home. Like AM has not proven to be an elite team this year, they have not proven to have um, an they elite can't offense. Throw the wall. For, yeah, so they cannot, yeah, their offense is. Not great. And Arkansas is a better coach team. They're a better coach team. They may not have as much talent as AM, but like they have SEC players. They're fine and they can move the ball. They can move the ball. They play good defense. Like I would take Arkansas in this game. So, like, well, let's talk about Texas AM real quick. I never understood this, how they consistently they either have like one a good quarterback and the rest of their team is horrendous or the rest of their team is just off the charts good and they have the <laughs> worst quarterback in division 1 football it makes no sense like did jindo spend all of his budget on just everybody else except the quarterback and just like yeah maybe we like this Haynes King guy can like maybe just get us there like kind of like a Teddy Two Gloves kind of thing it makes no sense like if you're a decent recruit like why would you not go there you would start immediately I just think it's hard to hit on quarterbacks, man. Like it's like the NFL. That's true. Thing, right? Like like think how many you know first rounders, second rounders, or whatever that have been drafted as quarterbacks, especially top ten picks that have been complete busts, right? And those are guys that have gone through college, that have played at big time programs, that have had you know tape on film, uh, and they still aren't like they're not that quality. So I think it's just hard to, to project from one level to the next because again, we're talking about kids that aren't playing. They're not playing in the same high school. They're not playing in the same you know, 6A, 5A, whatever it is, like size schools, they're not playing the same competition. So it's very, very hard to 100% judge what a quarterback's going to be on the next level. So I, I kind of understand it, but you're right, man. Like, if you're talking about Texas football, you can't get a quarterback, man. And, like, Texas A&M, that's the SEC. It Unlimited is money. Unlimited it, money. It, it, is like, it, it should be easier than it is. But I just think when it comes down to college quarterback, NFL quarterback, same thing. When you're moving from one level to the next, it's super hard to project what that person's actually going to be able to accomplish. That's just my view on it. Dylan, do you have anything on this game? Uh, I don't, but I lean under. Uh, just I lean, un- I lean under said. too. There we go. Yeah. The A and M can't pass. I mean, they're going to have to run the ball. I'm not going to and- take it. I'm not going to take it. Come on, Carter. Join the dark no. side, baby. Come on. <laughs> no, this, this is a weird one. A and M unders keep hitting, so they're it's going to flip. And I think Arkansas may may be able to score a little score some points on this A and M team. So yeah, I'm not officially taking it, but. Gun to my head, I'm probably I would probably take the under here. It moved up a half a point from the open, but that doesn't scare me too much. All right, let's Dylan, just get into. I, I like that, Dylan. We should have a gun to my head play uh, top three plays, bro. <laughs> the plays we don't want to make, but that, gun to our head. That's plays. what that's what the parlay becomes. <laughs> gun to our head parlay, bro. <laughs> All right, I'll just start it off. I mean, I already mentioned these two earlier. Give me over in Florida, Tennessee, over 62 and a half, and over in USC, Oregon State, over 70 and a half. Uh, the Florida, Tennessee one I actually do like because I, I don't think either defense is good, and I think both quarterbacks are electric, and I think they're going to put up points. The USC, Oregon State one literally comes down to – I just uh, – it's going to be, what, an 8.30 kickoff? It's going to be a late kickoff on uh, uh, mountain time. I'm just going to go with the points. It's going to be an awesome game. I don't want to cheer for a side. I just want to see points. Now, now, I feel like we had a very similar conversation last week with UC Fresno State with this super high total. And why well, did? Oh, we did, we did put that in the we, parlay, didn't we? Yeah, we were having this exact same. Con- I, I well, it didn't matter. Right it didn't. It didn't matter though because what, Connor Connor fumbled the bag every single week. He's fumbled the bag. He took Blake <laughs> minus sixteen and a half against against Liberty. 
Uh, oh man, you would ca- his picks are oh for a thousand. <laughs> Mine are like two for a thousand. So we're like we're a little positive. <laughs> he had that uh, one Tennessee over. What was that Tennessee pit? Tennessee yeah, pit but over just because he got it early. Just be, yeah, just because he got it early. You and I, I got screwed by it. I missed it by a half point. Oh my gosh, it's been awful lately. Uh, somebody, somebody, give a pick, Grant. Give a pick. Come on. All right, the USC one I've already given. Yeah, minus five yeah. and a half. That's an official one unit pick. So I'm going to take that one. Um, the other play I'm going to make. And again, I think y'all should take this one with me. Free money play right here. Watch out. Is that teaser with the, I'm going to call the BYU, previous BYU P5 competition teaser. Okay. That's the official name of it right there. And it's going to be, you're going to be. Can, we, can we shorten that down? Can we shorten that down to something? <laughs> Abbreviate <BYU> it. <laughs> competition no. teaser. I don't know. I don't know how to. <laughs> yeah, but um, basically, you're going to get. Uh, Oregon basically money line against Washington State, which I really like. Although they're bouncing off a big win at home, they are going on the road. Don't love that, but I do think this Oregon team is superior to this Washington State team, and I think a lot of people are putting the stock into what Washington State's done. So until they prove otherwise, I'm gonna I'm gonna lean on Oregon's talent and ability to uh, run the ball on Washington State. Um, and then you're gonna get Baylor plus nine, plus nine and a half. Let's see, six and a half or whatever. No, plus eight and a half. I guess is what it would be um, against. Uh, who am I think I'm blanking on the other team they're playing? Oh, uh, Iowa State. Yeah, it is away, and Baylor has been I think three and eight at the spread last away game. So you're you're betting against that, which isn't great. Um, but I do think they can cover on if you're teasing them in this game to almost ten points. So I do like the Baylor team. I think they're going to be able to run the ball. I think both teams are going to run the ball. They're going to try to hold on to the ball. And I think that's going to create a lower type score game. So I think they can cover a close game even if they lose. So that's my other play. I love that play. I'll give I'll give out a couple one unit plays that I have. I literally have just added these since we sat down just from our conversation. The first one's Tennessee team total over 37 and a half. And the main reason I'm playing that is because Tennessee actually ranks 22nd in all of college football in the amount of plays they run per game. They're sitting at 80. And you're telling me that a team with Hendon Hooker at quarterback can't score at least 38 points after running 80 offensive plays. I mean, I'm going to have to take that. And then uh, Rutgers, Iowa, under 34 or whatever it's at. Give give it to me mm. until it's under 28, just on principle. I mean, I did it last week. It worked <laughs> great. And we got to see, uh, what's his face? Petrus, Petrus, play on Sunday. Because of the rain delay. Sunday. Look at that. So I'm going to take the under. I don't even know what the number. I think it's 34, 33. I'm taking the under there for a unit as well. Um, I'll just, I'll just go ahead and I'll say it. Yeah, give uh, it out. You know, I'll go over. <laughs> it's the lowest total in college football history. It's at, I have it at 33 and a half right now, 33 and a half, 34, whatever. It's going to get to 40. I can grind out another over. We did it tonight. Why not do it again? <laughs> I, I, oh, man. You got to think in college football, there are going to be two stupid plays in this game that just result. There's going to be a scoop and score, a pick six, something weird. If the first half, if there's three touchdowns in the first half, it's over. But Carter, the, the stupid play could be a red zone turnover. That's true. That's true. I, I mean, I, <laughs> just the I, risk I, we I'm take. not saying I'm not going to contradict myself whenever I make those points, but <laughs> I can't physically in a college football game, how ridiculous and insane college football is. I have to go over 33 and a half, 34 in a game. Uh, and then this one. It's not even a loyalty play. If you've seen uh, my picks blogs that I've been writing for BYU games, I've been very honest. I'm actually – I don't think I've – I think I've hit each week. I have, yeah. Yeah, I you hit, have. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, BYU Baylor, I got that one. And then I, I, I said take Oregon, but I did not take Oregon. You not, Yeah, you didn't put money on it, but you knew it. Yeah, yeah. I said take and Oregon. You give a very detailed tweet of all the reasons why – Oregon should win this game and it hit so and Very- and I said Jaron Hall over one and a half passing touchdowns that hit and yep. over 58 hit in that Oregon game <clears throat> but that should have hit like in the third quarter that was ridiculous you had to sweat that out um but this week love BYU minus 21 and a half I think maybe hopefully it gets down to I would buy the half point just to be just to be a little safe uh BYU get it down to minus 21 uh the over under is 49 and a half I just think BYU just whoops them. You could, t- I think BYU might cover the over themselves. 
I mean, I'm again, I'm guessing BYU's team total will be around 34 and a half around there. Uh, I would take the BYU team total first half BYU first half team total BYU everything BYU in this game they're going to come out blitzing come out of the gates firing 815 kickoff we they're copying us Grant everybody's talking about the day game theory all of a sudden we've been talking about it for years now Every, we've been on this. we've been on this we've, since the 2020 season dude whatever they make on those articles which is probably like ten dollars I want our two dollar and fifty cent royalty fee right for being on this I'll take it down I'll take it down to a 50 cent royalty fee I just <laughs> I just want to be noticed exactly we see a little bit of that kickback um no I'm with you man I do think that's kind of a spicy play um the only thing that scares me about taking BYU in the big spreads is Kalani will never run up the score he'll rather like knee it right he rather knee the ball on the one yard line and piss every over better in the world off um that's just the kind of guy he is so that's the only thing that freaks me out but I'm with you man I think Roderick is going to try and establish some some actual punishment for basically what people have been saying these past few weeks. So I, I definitely see them airing it out, running the ball on Wyoming. It's just whether or not the defense can hold Wyoming to a certain amount of points. I, I, I honestly believe this BOE offense is going to be fine scoring points. It's just the defense, whether they're going to be able to score, like hold them to like, you know, seven to 21 points in that range. And that's why I love the team total. And then I'm mm-hmm. trying to get the line here. And I love the first quarter minus six and a half. I genuinely think. It's going to be like the USF game where they come out first two plays are just going to be 40, 50 yard bombs immediately. Cause I, the stat came out. I think the longest pass play for BYU so far this year was like 37 yards. I guarantee you there's a 50 yard touchdown in this game. Is Puka, Puka playing? I bet you Puka plays. So apparently the, the rumor has it that he wants to put NFL film on tape and he's done waiting it out. So I, I think he plays. We'll see. I, yeah. And if he plays, absolute mortal lock that's my favorite pick of the week but yeah BYU first quarter BYU first half BYU full game BYU team total team total BYU first half team total everything BYU coming off a humiliating loss Wyoming coming off their biggest win of the season by far beating Air Force when they were like a 10 point underdog and this, weren't like this 21 one, players out though for Air Force or something like that there's like an entire like roster out for them or something like that it was weird they had like a ton of players not playing that game I didn't hear that. But anyhow, they gave up 38 points to Illinois. That should also tell you something, too. And they also <laughs> gave up 37. They gave up, what, 37 points, 34 points to Tulsa? I'm not yeah. too worried. So yeah. give me BYU. T- team total might be like three, four unit kind of play. Yeah. And then everything else is just one unit. But uh, And then Duke plus seven out of principle <laughs> against Kansas. <laughs> Shout out the sellout. <laughs> I love it. I love the, the you kind of went away from the mic, so it wasn't as strong as you normally would say their plays, but I, I appreciated it. I, I, I don't want to say Duke plus seven too loud in a college football game. <laughs> <laughs> I, have, uh, I have a couple two-unit plays, and these, these next three that I'm about to give you, because I have one that's a three-unit play, they are ugly, guys. Hold your nose. Uh, the first one's Middle Tennessee State plus 26 against Miami. Ooh. <laughs> they, Ooh. They, they commit an equal number of turnovers per game. This parlay is going to lose so fast this week. <laughs> <laughs> it's ugly. I'm telling you, it's ugly. But 26 um, is a lot of points, especially when you have two teams that are equal on turnovers. And Miami just commits a ton more penalties than this team does. So when it comes down to, you know, obviously, Middle Tennessee's stats are not better than Miami's. But when it comes to discipline, Middle Tennessee State – is, is a little bit more uh, at advantage. So I'm taking them plus 26 for two units against Miami. And then Arkansas State, Old Dominion, under 56 and a half. Old Dominion averaging 18.2 points per game. And they both rank in the top 50 in all of college football and offensive penalty yards. So if they do get a drive going, odds are holding, false start, whatever, yeah, it might slow some momentum. So Banking on that. And uh, Old Dominion, almost three turnovers a game. So the odds Jeez. of at least one of those being in the red zone or something, that I'm I'm going to bank on that. So Nice. Uh, let me see here. I'm going through the picks right now. And Grant, I'm going to I'm gonna go against you on that Baylor game, dude. I think I'm going Iowa State minus two and a half. Ugh. Solely I don't know how you can bet line, Iowa State on anything. Solely just because that line makes no sense. That line, it should be Baylor. You're I would right. pick them at least. It doesn't make sense, but I will say this. And Vegas Iowa, is begging you. Iowa State Vegas is begging in, you. I know. Vegas Iowa State begging in you. these games, man, are awful. They're terrible, these <laughs> set, the setups. That's all I'm going to say. You've been warned. You've been Has, fairly is Baylor warned. good in these games? No, they've been terrible in away games. That's, That's what I'm saying. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like, we're, you're, 
and the line the Vegas, Vegas is begging you to take Baylor. Yeah, the line opened I mean, at plus one. Uh, Iowa State minus one and a half. Did it? So it's it's shifted all the way there then. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, like I said, I'm, I'm I, just trying I still, to warn you. I have a teaser for that reason. Weird stuff's gonna happen. I'm with you, but uh, don't tease college football, Grant. I'm teasing this game. I'm telling you, that's a spicy play. That's I'm gonna put play. I'm gonna put a little thing in the podcast, the one eight hundred gambler number, like right above <laughs> your head. <laughs> I love it. I love teasing it. Teasing college football. I made that joke <laughs> earlier this week against. I, I I made that joke with Dylan earlier this week. He thought I killed someone. I normally don't. You know, I don't normally like tease like tease games either. But I'm telling you, there's something weird's gonna happen in that game. So I kind of want the extra touchdown. And then same thing with Oregon. It's like. I just if you're talking about square up Oregon versus Washington State, bro, give me Oregon. Come on. Come on. I can I can live with that play losing. All right. So now now what were you gonna say, Dylan? Well, interesting topic for discussion possibly. Is it worse teasing college football or the NBA? Oh, bro, you don't tease NBA. basketball. You don't <laughs> yeah, tease basketball. NBA, bro, sure. even str- I would rather tease college football than just bet straight in the NBA. <laughs> NBA sucks. Yeah. Because it's you don't so know hard. who's play in the regular season. Bro, you don't even know who's playing that night. I or remember club, one dude. What club they went to the night before. Like, you don't know any of this stuff, right? You don't know any of it. And there's, I remember. <laughs> it's the worst. <laughs> One dude called into Pick Central one day with an NBA teaser, and they laughed him off the phone lines. Oh, it was so funny. And no, yeah. you don't because it's like four points in basketball. It's like a, it's like a four. Yeah, that does nothing. Like, what is a four and a half point teaser going to do for you in the NBA? Yeah, um, literally nothing. <laughs> uh, also, one one pick I'm looking at. I haven't decided if I'm going to take it or not. Is Texas Tech plus seven at home against? Texas. I just like them as a home dog in a rivalry game. Ooh. That game does get weird every year, huh? It's always yeah. close. It's That's always why close. I, Last I haven't year, I decided like yet. It's, it's kind of a lean right now, but we'll see. We'll see how uh see how That's Saturday kind of a fun goes. Lean. I kind of like that one. You're, you're kind of selling me on it. I like it. It's at it's at 3 30. Mm, I wish that was a night game. Tortillas are gonna be flying. Let's put it that way. Yeah, shout out Lubbock. How many Texas coaches get hit by tortillas over under? <laughs> we need to know uh, that. <laughs> all right, let's do the par. Let's do the parlay. Grant, what's your parlay pick? <laughs> all right. Um, <laughs> so I can't have a teaser because you guys hate on the teaser. I agree with you. <laughs> I don't like teasers very often. Um, I don't know, man. You guys aren't really sold on the uh, the USC minus five and a half. It's kind of freaking everybody out. So I don't know if we can add that in there. I like that one. I don't mind that. We can add it. That? We can right. play it in there. Then that that'd be my unit. That'd be my play then. Trust in the Trojan, the Trojan horse. Gr- Dylan, I swear if you say under 33 and a half. <laughs> no, we'll, keep, we'll, keep, <laughs> we'll ignore the fact that that was one of the winners in the parlay last week and we'll keep that out. Whoa, we'll whoa, whoa, out. whoa, 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 whoa. The only winner in the parlay. I wasn't going to say that, Carter. I wasn't going to do that. No, I need to hold myself accountable. I'm the one giving out game of the years, Fresno State, Nebraska. I'm the one I need I need to be punished. I've been punished. <laughs> I've been punished. <laughs> that's big of you, Carter. That's that's big of you. Yeah, yeah like, I'm out here. Connor's not even here to show up to face that's the music. Connor's like he, uh, Carter's like please punish me. No, really, I need to be punished, guys. Tomorrow. I should. <laughs> For me saying that Nebraska plus eleven was going to cover <laughs> against Oklahoma, I don't deserve that. Now, 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 excuse time. I have excuses because yes. Fresno State and UTSA, their quarterbacks did get hurt in the game, so I did get screwed there. Uh, you should get your money refunded. Um, you know, <laughs> you know, at least like a like a buy one get one free Burger King coupon or something, something to like ease the pain when a quarterback gets hurt in a game that you bet on. Uh, <laughs> All right. What's your play, Dylan? So uh, my my top college football play and the one that I'm going to ask be included in the parlay, Massachusetts plus nine and a half versus Temple. Plus Ooh. nine and a half. It opened at ten and a half. It's down to nine and a half. So I get, I'm getting it at a worse number, but I like the movement. And We're talking about UMass here, right? Yes, the, UMass. The, the Minutemen, right? Oh, <laughs> the Minutemen, baby. We uh, oh, Massachusetts. Yeah. Temple sucks, though. I kind of like this play. Well, Temple UMass. fumbles about two times a game. I mean, UMass wins this turnover Whoa. turnover battle big, and the, UMass okay. is forcing on defense at least one turnover a game. 
So when you get to nine and a half points, that one turnover, I think there'll probably be more. But that one turnover could could be the difference between cashing a bet and ripping it up and throwing it in the trash. I like that a lot, especially if it gets to a little like plus 10. Oh, yeah. Because oh, awesome. I'm not going to place it until Saturday. Uh, I think it's the plus 10. I kind of like that. Um, let me read you Temple's games this year so far. They lost 30 to zero to Duke. But this Duke team is college football playoff worthy, so we can scratch that off. Uh, Temple won 30 to 14 against Lafayette, and then they lost 16 to 14 to Rutgers. Ooh, so, you're losing to Rutgers, man. You don't deserve the respect. And then UMass. All right. So settle in for these one, boys. Have you guys looked at the UMass scores this year? No, but the funniest thing matter. about that, the fact that Dylan brought this up is like, I literally remember saying to myself, I was like, I'll never bet on UMass. There's no way in hell I'm ever going to bet on that UMass team. After BYU is up 42 0 in the first half of a game and then they don't even cover. So bad in college football. So this is hilarious that it's going to add it. I kind of love it, bro. I'm all about it. Let's hear it. All right. All right. Let's, let's hear the UMass scores real quick and then let's see if you love it. Uh, let's start off. Let's go backwards. So week three, UMass beat Stony Brook 20 to 3. The Stony Brook fighting, what are they? Um, pizza. No I don't knows. know. Uh, no. U- UMass at Toledo. Toledo fifty five. That's credible. Yeah, there you go. Yep, Toledo fifty five. UMass ten. Jeez. Not great. Good Ohio State put up seventy seven on that Toledo team. Um, and then <laughs> Tulane beat UMass week one forty two to ten. Oof. So. Nine and a half. I mean, I you guys are just let's write, let's right do now. it. You know, I'm, 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 we're, it's in. I'm, t- I'm, I love riding. it. No, no, I love it. Do it. I just, you act like I don't I ride know. with you. I'm out here. I, w- you're like, oh, it's going to be a five star play. And then you're texting me all worried, like, oh, I, I, if I could cash out, I would. I was like, no, no, mm-hmm. we ride. And guess what happened? You're, we grinded it out. We, you, you could even watch the end of the game. I couldn't. Oh, I'll be honest with you. I did not turn the game off. That was a private reverse jinx that worked. Okay. It worked. I love it. I love it. I love but it. You I try to reverse. You, you, I, I change up my whole mindset from unders to overs, and then that whole catastrophe happened with Thursday Night Football. You're the man. You, you, you hopped in there with me, Carter. When we get into NFL, you need to give me an under, and I'm just going to ride blind on the under. I don't care what it is. Oh, I, got, <laughs> I got an under for you. All righty. I, 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 I wasn't worried about that. And then <laughs> uh, I'm going to add ah, – all right, I'll let you guys decide this one. Texas Tech plus seven or over 62 and a half Florida, Tennessee. Florida, give Tennessee. Give me the over. Yeah. Give, uh, Florida, Tennessee. Give me the okay, that's what I thought, but I just want to make sure. All righty, this week's parlay is over 62 and a half Florida, Tennessee, UMass plus nine and a half against Temple, and then USC minus five and a half against Oregon State. Lock it in plus 600. Uh, the reverse parlay will also hit at plus 600. <laughs> nice. So, there you go. Take your That's pick. Just, take your pick right there. All right. Let's talk a little NFL right now. Um, should we just roll straight into the picks? Just get the games we like? Yes. That works for me. All right. Uh, I'm just going to start this off. Uh, why are the Kansas City Chiefs only minus five and a half point favorites at the Indianapolis Colts? Why? Someone tell me why. That's a great question. And I can't tell you why, but this is this is one of my favorite favorite plays of the week. It, it's not a five star, but as of right now, it's a four star. It could it could get called up to a five star by the time Sunday rolls around. So it's in so, the triple A right now, getting called up to the majors eventually. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And uh when it opened, I think it opened at three and a half and it got up all the way to six and a half and now it's at five and a half. I have four units on it at six and a half. I would take it all the way to three and a half. Colts 0-1-1, and, and this is their homecoming game. This is their first home game. The Chiefs are coming off of a Thursday night game against, you know, one of the best games that, at least most anticipated games of all season, Chargers and Chiefs, and barely squeak out a win. I'm convinced that the Chiefs, this is a, this is a sandwich between a big game and a look-ahead spot because, like you said, next they have the Bucks. They they do not care about this Colts game. I'm sure they care, but you know the Colts the Colts got to win this one. They're 0-1 and one. They tied the Texans and they lost to the Jags. So 
Fishy line number one. Number two, the Chiefs are kind of – they sandwich this game in between two pretty big games, and the Colts have to win. Honestly, the Colts aren't that bad of a team. If they have Michael Pittman back, I mean, th- this game is really a, n- a no-brainer. So I'm taking the Colts plus five and a half for four units. I'm taking them to win outright at plus 200 for two units. I think the Colts get their first win in Indianapolis this week. I You mentioned the most important part there, Michael Pittman playing. If Michael Pittman is playing, absolutely, I play this game. If he's out, I stay away. I'm not getting near this game. Mm. See, I think even without him, I think even without him, that line. I think that line's going to move up to seven and a half without Pittman. Especially okay. like Sunday morning, okay. if they announce it, it's going to move immediately. That I get that. That's fair. Maybe wait, waiting off for that a little bit. I like that. But uh, yeah, I'm with you on Colts plus five and a half for everything you said. They got and the this Colts team is not that bad as they've been showing, and, and I think the Jags are better than what people give them credit for. But they're they got to win one, and I think this is a perfect spot for the Chiefs to kind of get caught sleeping. And I kind of like I kind of like Jonathan Taylor parlayed with a little Travis Kelsey same game parlay anytime touchdown mm. plus 180 payout I kind of like that yeah that's that's a solid play man if anything like you said you're betting on Jonathan Taylor to be able to run against this defense and it's a pretty safe bet that they can keep it with them a score right so I do kind of I'm, I'm with you guys I wouldn't take the play officially but um I understand where you come from Dylan like the the plus five and a half points in this game is just it's odd it's odd to me Everyone's going to be on the Chiefs. The entire public space is going to be on the Chiefs, even with those crazy points. It's just, like you said, there's a reason why Vegas had it open at three and a half, and it's moved all the way to five and a half. It's just the public is hammering the Chiefs, not because the matchup should be that much of a difference. It's just what's happening. So I'm kind of with you guys at home. It's too fishy for me. I just can't bet against the Chiefs, but I, if, like you said, if I had to play, I would definitely lean Colts. The, the Chiefs the Chiefs are like the public team, too, and, and they cannot yep. cover those. You know, they get favored by X amount of points, and it just seems like they very rarely can cover it. I mean, we saw it yep. the last Thursday with the Chargers. And, yep. you know, they blew out the Cardinals week one. But even going back to, like, 2019, 2020, they just – touchdown favorites, they don't seem to cover those spreads. Yeah, the, the Chiefs are a cash machine for Vegas because everyone mm-hmm. is, inflates the numbers. They all hammer that the spread. And they're just getting free points, basically a value. So Vegas loves them, but yeah. So I'm with you. It just seems like a lot of. It's just a weird game, man. Like you can't. Yeah, I'm just warning people out there that want to hammer the Chiefs. It's, I mean, you do what you got to do, but it just seems <laughs> odd. So I'm kind of with you. I'm with you on that one. So there's an obvious three team money line parlay that everybody's going to do this week. <laughs> Let's talk about the second team that's going to be in that money line parlay. That's the Bengals are minus six at the New York Jets over under 45 and a half. Zach Wilson is not playing. It's going to be Joe Flacco once again. Um, like I, I, this is a stay away for me. If anything, I lean Jets plus six just because 88% of the bets are on the Bengals and 92% of the money are on the Bengals right now. Yeah, I mean, I'll take it as the, you know, not closet Jets fan of the uh, pack. <laughs> <laughs> the, the problem with this game is the Bengals obviously are not an 0 and 3 type team. So they, they're going to, it's something's got to break, right? It's And the, the Jets are, are not a 2 and 1 type team. <laughs> exactly. So it's like, it doesn't make sense this game. Like, they shouldn't win this game. They really, like, the, the line is, I think it's a little high, but it's around there where it should be. Like, the problem with the Jets is this. Last year, they were the statistically worst defense in the NFL, and this year, they're not that much better. They're better for sure. They have the better pieces, but the cohesiveness of it yet has not like matched yet. They're still giving up a ton of points. So Joey Burrow, if he's playing like he's normally going to play, he should be fine. The only problem I have is that the defensive line is pretty for, is pretty good for the Jets, so that does concern me um, because Joe Burrow is getting hit like crazy right now, and I think he's going to continue to get hit in this game. Um but I just don't know how you can lay six points with the Bengals right now. Like, with what's been going on, a away game in Jersey, like, I don't know, man. That just seems weird to me. I don't like that. But like you said, like, the Bengals are not an 0 3 team, so it's almost I don't see them going 0 3. There's, like, almost no way in my mind I see them going 0 3. But then also the same way, I don't see the Jets going 2 1. So it's like, it's a weird game for me. Um, man, ugh, that game. I, I would, t- I lean. Jets plus six two, but it's I, I'm not going to officially bet that game. I can't. You can't. I'm kind of. <laughs> no, I can't either. No. That's that's gross. 
I'm kind of with you there, Grant. Like when the line comes out, it's kind of crazy to see an O and two team favored against another team, even if you don't associate any names or previous thoughts of those teams, you know, with the line in the game. But they just can't protect Burrow. And if they can't protect Burrow, Burrow can't do his thing. I don't know how he's put up with it for I mean, he's in his third year. You you would think that he would have something to say, like He's proven that he's this talent at quarterback. He he has to go to somebody and say, you got to get somebody up there to protect me, which is crazy to me. But I'm kind of with you. It's the Bengals. It's tough to say they're an 0-3 team, but the fact that they're favored by that many points and they haven't won a game yet, I, I don't know. I, I'm kind of with you. If I had to take something, I would probably take Jets plus six. But uh, I don't know. Joe Burrow did delete Twitter and Instagram off his phone, so maybe he's got that mind right. Oh, but he's, he's got Facebook he's, still. He's just got Truth Social and Facebook, baby. <laughs> can, can we confirm if he has MySpace? That's that's how I know if I want to bet him or not. He has to. If he, he, has, if he to. has MySpace right now, I'm for sure hammering the bank. <laughs> Who's his top eight? We got to think yeah, Zach exactly. Taylor, Jamar Chase. Yeah, exactly. I love it. Coach O. <laughs> yeah. um, Jefferson. Buffalo at the Dolphins. Uh, Buffalo's minus five and a half on the road. A lot of home dogs this week, which scares me. Um, I can't take a side in this game because that comeback that the Dolphins had scared me. And the I think the Bills blowing out the Titans is a little over and is a little not I I mean I think the Bills are that good, but I don't think they're gonna blow this blow this Dolphins team out. Five and a half is a lot of points, but I don't trust Tua enough. Like I I'm gonna pretzel here on this one, but I, you know what I do like FanDuel, their popular same game parlay. Stephon Diggs, anytime touchdown. Tyreek Hill, anytime touchdown. <laughs> Josh Allen, anytime touchdown. Jalen Waddle, anytime touchdown. 20 to 1. Plus 2,000. Plus 2,000. Nice. Wow. I don't hate that, but like it's too many popular picks. But um, you can also do a uh, Bengals first half money line parlayed with the Bills first half money line. That comes out to like plus 130. And you like we like we said before, the Jets are awful in the first half of games. Yeah, they're terrible. They're always coming from behind, and it's not even like a Zach Wilson thing. Like Joe Flacco has been the same way. It's the same pattern. It's like they cannot figure out like first quarter scoring. I don't know the statistics on it, but it has to be. I know last year they were like bottom two or three teams in the NFL in first quarter scoring, if not the worst. They're probably the same this year. They've been they've been awful this year in first quarter scoring as well. And like they're just not a consistent team in the first half of the. So I kind of love that play. But dude, just to be honest, like I would, I would, I would bet. I'm for sure gonna bet uh, a couple units on the Bills the, to cover this spread. I really am. I know. So it you're saying, crazy. but what about that first half play though? I would hammer that too. Yeah, because I'm gonna hammer. I think the the normal Bills first half more than anything, more than the full game. Um, but the Bills first half, they're just a well oiled machine. Like I can't bet against Josh Allen and this team, both on defense and on offense. They are the most complete team to me so far I've seen in the NFL. So. The Miami has had multiple games where they've kind of come back in weird fashion. I don't know if 100 percent I trust it. If it this kind of feels like a magic magic right now, not necessarily like statistical comebacks. And so I, for me, it's like the Bills are legit. They are so legit, and until they prove me wrong, like I'm gonna hammer them and make money off of them as long as I can. So I think, like you said, because it's away, it's at Miami, and because of what Miami's done, I think that's why this game is you know only five and a half. It, I think it should be actually closer to like a touchdown. So I'm going to take the Bills first half, put more money on that, like three units on that, and then a couple units on the full game. And then I kind of like that play too where you said like the the Bengals and Bills first half money line together. That's a fun one too. So that for me, I just, I'm, I'm going to hammer the Bills until they prove me wrong. This is, this is a tough one because I, I've been in on Tua even when I probably shouldn't have been. And <laughs> <laughs> that take is finally starting to reap a couple of rewards. But – he hasn't seen a defense like this yet. So, I mean, it's tough to see what – or even try to predict what he's going to do against a defense like that. So, that takes the over out of play for me. And I kind of lean Bills, but then, like, taking five and a half points on a Bills team that's coming on – they have a short week, a divisional road favorite, those are always tough to take too. So, I would – I I would probably – well, I am going to stay away. I think I might go under. I think I would go under in this game. But I'm going to stay away. All righty. Then sounds good. I Grant kind of convinced me, dude. Because the pro, the other problem with the Bills is 
like going betting against the Bills, I haven't done it this season, but I mean, don't do well, it. You you can't. You can't. Bro, it's like it's like betting against the 2017 Warriors. Bro, they cover big spreads. They just do. And then on top of that, the big thing about the Bills is they jump on you early. So think about this. They jump on you early. They're like, they go straight for the throat, like slice and dice you with Josh Allen just down the field, and they score points on you so fast that the only response they're going to have to do is just sling the ball. Now, Tua has responded super well being down early. I just don't know if he's going to be able to respond like what Dylan said against his defense coming back. Like, I honestly see them playing in a deficit early in this game because of what Josh Allen has proven so far early in games. And so he's going to have to come back. And if he's going to have to come back against his defense, I see picks happening. And that's why I, th- I think it's going to justify like a pick six or something's going to happen where it's going to justify the minus five and a half. So that's that's where I come from. I just kind of see like I envision the game going that way. And so that's kind of where I'm like, yeah, I'm cool playing the points there because I think the defense is going to do some damage against two as well. One last play on this game. One last play on this game I like is uh, Bill's first quarter team total over six and a half. I think they score a touchdown in the first half, or first quarter. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, let's uh, those are kind of the main games. I mean, we could talk about Niners, Broncos, kind of a gross game with Jimmy Garoppolo, uh, Packers, Buccaneers. I that's a game that's another game like we always see every year. I don't like that game, that game never turns out well, it's always a gross game. Um, let's just run through picks we like. I'll start <coughs> off. I'll, I'm I can't believe I'm saying this. I, I like the Panthers at home plus three, and it's not, even, I don't, I don't even want the, I don't, I don't even know if I want the Panthers to win. I want Matt Rule fired. <laughs> I really do. Um, <laughs> Panthers are a home division dog. I love home division dogs. And uh, I just don't think the Saints are that good. I think the Panthers defense is going to get to Jameis. I think Jameis is going to struggle uh, against them. And I, I, I think this is going to be a gross one. I almost, I, I think I lean under here. I think it's going to be like, I think it's going to be like 21 15, a weird score. Every Panthers game is a weird score like that, like 20 16, something gross like that. Uh, but I, I I like Panthers plus three, probably a small one unit play, unfortunately for me. How, does Taysom go off for two touchdowns though? That's the problem, bro. No, is Taysom no, unleashed against the Panthers? This Saints no. this Saints team is the most fraudulent team of all time. They're not good. Like <laughs> James is not good. Who's crowding them though? Everybody, like, everybody preseason was like was betting them to make the playoffs. Their over under win total was nine, nine true. wins. This is true. They're not this winning is true. nine games. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they got bailed out by a young uh, way coup field goal to make sure they're not 0-2. They got destroyed by the Buccaneers who had nobody. <laughs> but but on the other side of that, the, the Panthers might have the worst coach in all of football on that side. We have Wilfred the, the dog coaching. Bad. Yeah, we have Will the you know, remember the show Wilfred? That's who's coaching <laughs> the Panthers. <laughs> oh man, I love it. But I, I mean I've done enough on that rule, but yeah, I'm Panthers plus three, unfortunately. Uh, anybody like anything in this Vikings game? Bro, that's what I was about to say. Give me Lions plus six, dude. Give me Lions plus six. Ooh. I love it. I, I like that too. Lions. I love I'm... Lions plus – give me over three points against them. I'm taking it, bro. I'm taking Lions plus six for sure in this game. I got this before Monday Night Football at plus seven, and uh, – that I would take it, I'd probably take it down to three and a half. I mean, this Lions team, I don't know if they're legit or not, but they're a lot better than they were last year. And I think this Vikings team, you know, defense isn't great. I don't know. I kind of lean the over on that game too, but I would take Lions all the way down to three and a half. And Kirk Cousins, so that's all I have to say about that. He's an enigma. I, I don't know if he's like, I if you were to ask me right now if he's a good quarterback, I would say yes, but then. I would say no as I was watching him play. Maybe that's my answer right there. Maybe that's my answer. It's so weird. It's true though. I'm with you there. Like that's the perfect way to describe. It. I'm like yes, but definitely no. <laughs> that's how I feel about it. Yes, but definitely yeah. no. Yeah, he's like mm, under the lights. He shrivels. Yeah, no, he's he's like the whopper of quarterbacks, dude. Like whoppers aren't bad. Like. They're they're kind of sneaky underrated, but also you know you don't actually want a whopper. No, but when you, you have don't. a whopper, sometimes you're like, eh, it's not that bad. But then like <laughs> you have it again, and you're like, this sucks, dude. Like I'm never eating this again. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm good. I don't know. I'm good. Like, I paid for this. Yeah, I'm with you though. I, I like the I like the Lions at the point too. Give me the Lions at the. They're dogs, man. They they literally kept so many games close last year, and they're kind of the same vibe this year. Like 
Lines and the points are scary. I don't know how anybody bets against that. Non homer take. Hutchinson was a big improvement for that team. I'm. He seems like he's he fitting in pretty well there. Um, I do like the Vikings when they are at home. Uh, but I don't like I don't like the Vikings laying six points. I just that's yeah. too many points for the the Vikings. Uh, Dylan, give me an under to take. Whatever you say right here, I will blindly take. Saints team total under twenty one and a half. That's the, that's my favorite bet of the weekend. And I, I have some stats here to prove it. Let me rattle them off. For They're going to score 22. They're going to score 22. The Saints? No. Uh, well, no, they're not. That's the no, thing with not. with Jameis. It would either be like he did last week, three interceptions, four interceptions, eight interceptions, or like 500 pass, passing yards and four touchdowns. We don't know what kind of Jameis we're going to get. But the Carolina Panthers defense, I'm in on the defense. The offense, eh, I'm in on the defense. Uh, it looks like Carolina Panthers, 4.8. They allow 4.8 pass yards per attempt. That's first in pro football. So that, that's the one thing I'd be worried about is those big passes from Jameis. It doesn't look like we're going to get those. Uh, let's see. Saints commit a lot of penalty yards on offense. They're fourth, 159 penalty yards this season. And let's see. I'll pick one more important stat because I have like 12 written down. Uh, under, under oh, Saints. the Saints get uh, – Jameis gets sacked – Almost twelve percent of the snaps he takes when he passes when he drops back, fourth in the league. So, I really do think that the Saints don't score more than three touchdowns. Uh, obviously, keeping it under twenty one and a half. So that if that qualifies as an under, that's my under for you, Carter. Do you have like a regular game under you like? I like the was it Forty ers Broncos? They play right. They do. Yep, under forty five and a half. I like that one. Uh, Russ hasn't impressed me. I, his unders have hit. I think they're two and zero. They and, are uh, very much two and zero. Yeah, and then they've the 49ers, scored a combined thirty points in two games. Jeez, dude, and that just that just proves my point even more. I would take under forty five and a half. It might be at forty six now. I think it's been teetering, but that's my full game under. All right, I love it, but I am on that under Saints twenty one and a half team total. I I like that a lot. Grant, do you have anything else in the NFL? No, I uh, I'm like I'm like looking at the the Falcons game versus Seahawks. I don't. Like I know that. the it's, Falcons money line looks so tasty, dude. It looks tasty, but I don't know if I can take it, bro. Geno Smith, I have respect for Geno Smith. As crazy as that is, I do respect him. If um, you uh, if you're taking anything in uh, Bears Texans, there's a problem. There's a real need, unless problem. he's the yeah. under. All the hotline. Yes, I don't yes. even care if it's the under. Like, <laughs> no, dude, you got to stay away from this one. All right, let's uh, let's run th- just run through your picks real quick, Grant, and uh, just run down the line of all of all of our picks. You go first, Grant. Okay. Um. So Bills, everything kind of like your BYU vibe, right? <laughs> Bills. I'm I'm going to ride the hot hand on Josh Allen, like I said, just from the fact of them getting up to an early start. So I'm really more. Uh, Banking on the fact they start out hot, so that could you know come back to bite me. But I want to put like a th- basically whatever three units is, whatever your three unit play is, on the Bills first half. So it's probably like a minus four. What do you mind guess? I'm looking at five? it right now. Um, the team total is 29 and a half for the full game. Okay. Let me get first half for you. Uh, first half. First half spread. First half spread is minus three and a half at even odds. So that might go down to minus three, and you might be able to get that at minus 110. Yeah, that'd be dope. So, yeah, either way, it's minus three and a half, minus three, minus four. I take it up to minus four and a half, basically. But, um, yeah, I do love that first half play, banking on them going. I kind of like your play two Carter of the, the money line Bengals first half and the money line uh, Bill's first half. And again, this could be a thing where I'm putting way too much weight on the fact that Josh Hans going to start early and it could backfire, right? Two of those stars hot or something like that. But I'm, like I said, I'm betting on the hot hand to keep it going what they've proven. Um, so I kind of like that play too. And I will put a little bit of money on the full game minus five and a half as of right now. So that's my play with that. Um, yeah, that's my, that's really my only play in the NFL that I'm going to hammer. Dylan, yeah. Uh, let's see. Titans Raiders over 46. I'd bet this to 48. I'm going to put three units on this. The Raiders front cannot stop the run. And that's about all the Titans can do. And sometimes they can't even do that. But I'm hoping we get that back. I also think the Titans Titans get their first win. I think that might be plus money right now for a unit. Uh, Already discussed the Saints team total under 21 and a half. I also have, let's see, uh, Saints Panthers under 40 and a half. 
Panthers can't score, but they can shut down the Saints. So low scoring game. Uh, Lions plus seven. I got Jacksonville plus seven against the Chargers. I got the Falcons plus two and a half on Monday uh, against the Seahawks, but I would still take that at where it's at now. <coughs> money line against the Seahawks. Uh, under 45 and a half for the 49ers Broncos. And I got Dallas plus three on Monday uh, for the for Ooh, the Cowboys Giants game. That's down to but, plus one. Yeah, yeah would, so you got a plus three. Very nice. Maybe the still, early lines are your are, are your move now. That's what I'm trying to figure out, man, because I think I'm just not sharp <laughs> enough to know. I'm not sharp enough to know if they're going to. No, move we're not. not. But we're not. But Dallas but... plus three. I would take it. At, I think they win the game. I don't hate nice. that. Um, all right. I'll run through mine real quick. I have the Colts plus five and a half. Uh, Jets are lean, not official. Um, I want to take this Patriots so bad but I'm not going to take the Patriots. I want to take them so bad, but I will not take the New England Patriots because I just – I can't – Lamar coming off a, just a heartbreaking loss. I think the I think the Ravens might come out, but the way that public money's working, I'm, I'm a little scared off by that. Um, I will be taking that first half money line parlay, Buffalo and Cincinnati, and that comes out – I think it was plus 130. I think it was coming out, came out too. I'm not quite sure. Uh, Panthers plus three, loyalty pick. Uh, Jags plus seven at the Chargers. <laughs> hey, don't hate. And then, of course, I'm going to ride with Dylan's under 21 and a half in the Saints team total. And I think that's going to be it for me. I think I'm going to do a lighter card this week. Nothing bro, that, was crazy like, that was like eight games, bro. Bro, that was like five. That was like five picks. <laughs> Grant, that's what I was thinking. I was like, that's a light He's card. Like, I'm gonna do a card I, said, I said a lot of words. <laughs> last week, <laughs> last, week I, last week, I last week I said like eleven plays. Eleven. <laughs> it was insane. And then oh, I mean, it, it didn't do. It didn't go so bad for me in the NFL last week. College football was an absolute. Can, can I give a hot take, boys? Can I give a hot take? I yeah. don't I like hammering NFL bets. I just I can't put a pulse on it, man. Week to week, anything can happen. Yeah, it's the most bipolar game to me. I feel like college is a little – I mean, again, college, again, it's, it's also can be kind of crazy. But I feel like college has an easier pulse to kind of know when a team's covering or not. I don't know. I don't know what you guys think, but NFL's hard. See, it's I'm a very different one. I'm the opposite because, like, in, in college football, you get, like, 40-point spreads. And then in the NFL, very rarely do you see – like, I feel like there's more variance. And I – I guess it, it it's a personal anecdote, too, because I've caught myself on the wrong side of some college football plays more so than the <laughs> pro. But I get what you're saying. It's all it's all kind of a crap shoot. It's tough. When it comes to NFL spreads, I'm just like, oh, man. these I, Like, to be honest, would it surprise me if the Jags took out the Chargers straight up? It would not even surprise me. Like, if they won straight up in that game, right, and they didn't even need the plus seven or plus six or whatever it is, like, that wouldn't even surprise me. But, yeah, that makes sense. And that's the thing. If you don't want to take a side grant, I have a wonderful bet that you could take uh, regarding the point total. Oh, I want to hear it. Unders. Unders are always fun. I'm Unders telling you, Grant, come, jo- come join Unders us. are on fun. Come join me. <laughs> if, I, if I convert completely to the under game, bro, that would be quite a scene. I would the be only amazed. bet that you win all game until you know you what? Lose it. I'll commit. I'll commit to one under this week. I'll let you guys pick the under I take this week. I'm deciding between Green Bay and Tampa Bay mm. under 42. Is your favorite one Dylan the Panthers game? Um, that's the team total. Okay. That's the Saints team total under. But I, th- I, I thought you had the under for that game too. You did, I right? I do. I would say, yeah, I would say that is. Okay, I'll take. The it's still only one game. unit, but that's probably my favorite. I can't cheer for an under in a Panthers game just because I want the Panthers to score forty-one points to you know <laughs> kill that over. <laughs> uh, that's a fair point. That's a fair. Yeah, point. exactly. Um, but or under forty-seven and a half in this Eagles Commanders game. I actually don't hate that. I I don't I yeah. don't hate that. Which one do I take? You guys decide for me. I have. I have to. I have to start taking unders. I have take the to. Commanders one. That's kind of a fun one. I like that one. Okay, so let me read through this one more time. Let's see. I thought it was around five or six, but I I might be out of my mind. Colts plus five and a half. (laughs) Saints team total under 21 and a half. Uh, Under in the Commanders-Eagles game. That's three. We're only at three. Uh, Panthers plus three. I don't even like that one. Um, And then the Bills... (laughs) Chargers money in my parlay. That's only five. That's only five. Oh, Jags plus seven. I did say Jags plus seven. That's six plays. I don't hate that. That's fine. Right. Oh, and then anytime touchdown, Taylor and Kelsey. 
plus one seventy five. <laughs> seven. All right, we're at seven. Almost so, eight. So I, you can't. Look. You can't have even plays. You have to have an odd play so you win. Because if you go three and three, that's not cool. You got to go four and three. You lose a big. So you gotta. What we'll have to do is we'll have to recap after Sunday night football's over, and we'll see how much you actually played. So like right now it's what seven, and then we'll recap. You can't do that Sunday to me. Night. You can't do that to me. <laughs> I'm going over <laughs> under eleven. Oh man, hammer the over eleven and a half. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a fair amount. I think that's a fair amount. All right, we have to make a little quick parlay, and then let's get out of here. Uh, my pick is going to be – golly, I kind of want to go Jags plus seven. Mm. I'll hate it. And I'm going to go Jags plus seven. I'm going Colts in the number. Uh, for you listeners that want to get a little frisky, take Colts money line. That's Honestly, it's not a bad play at all. It's It's fun. It's a fun play. It's like the right play. Um, and mine's going to be the, the worst play out of the three. It's the Bills minus three and a half first half. So that's my <laughs> the All most right. square play, bro. I know. That, it's the worst. That's the NFL parlay this week. It is the Jacksonville Jaguars plus seven against the Chargers. Then we have the Bills first half minus three and a half. That might go down to minus three by the end of this, uh, by the end of the show. And then Dylan's play is the, what was your play, Dylan? Colts, Colts plus, five, plus and half. five and a half. If you're We're all balls, on the Colts you take plus five and a half, right? Oh, no, great. You're not on the Colts. You're not on the Colts. I like it. I'm just I'm not going to play it. Okay. Colts plus yeah. five and a half. Jags plus seven. And then Bill's first half minus three and a half. All right. That'll do it from us. Uh, make sure to check out cartercast.com and uh, check out all our social media and TikTok and everything. And we'll be back next week. And we have a big interview coming next week. We're back. Back. <laughs> College basketball interview coming next Friday. It'll be on the show. And we'll see you all then. Bye.